Hello, welcome. My name is Bryce Taubes. With me today is S. Angel Shaw of Resiliency Sage. Um, she's an alternative therapy coach, best-selling author, speaker, as well as a stress and trauma expert. Um, she offers a safe exit strategy in mel- and mental wellness coaching using a full range of alternative therapies for those who want a choice from clinical applications. You know, thank you so much, Angel. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you today. It's an honor. You know, so what was life like before you got into this field and really what was the catalyst or cause of events that got you into here? You know, everybody has their own history and a strange um, foundation to their beginnings. And a big part of it for me was it was raised right from childhood. There is this um, component that we look at clients and we do a, a background check on them kind of and we just ask this quiz and it's called an ACE. And an ACE means adverse childhood um, experiences. What have you experienced before the age of 18 that could dramatically affect your adult life? And that is where everything started. But on the opposite coin, there's always two sides of the coin. There's also the resiliency quiz, which allowed me to see how is it that I managed to cope through all those traumas. And so then I realized that my, my... you know, resiliency was a lot higher. Like I had a lot more support than I realized. And even after things like the military, um, I just learned how to tap into those resiliencies that just allow me to persevere. And that just, re- I realized that, wow, that post-traumatic growth is what I was really noticing. And um, yeah, I just, I went down that path. I just said, no, I need to learn this because I've, I've lived, God knows I've lived. So let me ask you this question, you know, ooh. <laughs> can, you imp- can you improve your resiliency over time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what ends up, sorry, Paul, that I should put that on pause. Um, yeah, you can improve your, your resiliency because you learn to find out your, what your coping skills are. There are certain things like when we're dealing with people with traumas or I'm, I get a, a phone call from somebody who needs to have a, someone to talk to because they're going through at that exact moment, something extremely um, stressful. The very first thing I start to listen to is, you know, where, like who and how, and you ask those, those questions and listen very carefully so that you know how to tap into um, the things that will help them get a sense of balance and, you know, to take that breath. And sometimes it's simple things like it could be just going for a walk or the, yes, they have a pet or they enjoy what the hobbies do they enjoy is uh, what music do they like to listen to. And um, if you could start tapping in those little start dialing in, it's almost like, you know, like a person who's trying to crack a safe and you listen to it and you're like, click, click, click. Oh, they're there. Okay. This is something we could connect with and I can help them. And they, they, they're the ones that allow themselves their own kind of helping help and, um, advancing forward to um, improving their resiliency. Mm-hmm. It's a realize, oh, wait, wait a second. Yeah, you know what? I do have some skills. And sometimes it just needs, a, needs somebody just to help ask the right questions. Yeah. Let's say they don't have someone who can ask the right questions. Is there a way they can start asking themselves questions to start building up that awareness? Sometimes, yes, but a lot of times, depending how deep they're into their situations, because as people, we have a tendency to stifle, like stuff down, stuff down, stuff down until that proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back. Yeah. And somebody said, oh, she broke a nail and she lost her crap. And I went, no, 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 that was it. That was the final thing that, that just made her like lose her, lose her cool. And it was because she's been stuffing so much down for so long. And, um, and, you know, a lot of us also get, get, we get caught up in our ego at the same time. And, and we don't want to, sometimes we, it, I just went through that exact same thing. Like sometimes people just don't want to appear to be a burden. They don't want to inconvenience other people. So you can really get lost in your crap and you get stuck down there. So there are times where you can, but a lot of times it would help if we or if we're taught this before we end up in a crisis. Mm-hmm. Let's like if we were just given that simple, simple little homework to just say, hey, you know, write, write it, like write this journal and say, you know, I, these are, these are, this is what helps me deal with my, my issues. Journal. Okay. 
Can so you have yourself, like, have you not, have you not also yourself found yourself stuffing, stuffing things down, not, so not to inconvenience people? It really depends. I mean, everybody has, has it to some degree and to some, like, and plus being able to see it to others. Um, plus, how, how would I know, right? Just like you're saying, how would I know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I tend to, uh, <clears throat> to be really, really slow to get annoyed. Then I stay annoyed for a pretty long time. You know, so it's, it's like, um, it'll take a pretty, pretty good amount of events. But then once I'm a little bit annoyed, it's like, okay, for a day I'm ranting, I'm yelling at, I'm like ranting, just like, nah, now we're done. But yeah, can you talk about building up our resiliency, you know, like during the time of quarantine or, or utilizing these, this slowdown to build up our, resi our resiliency? This is actually a lot of, I almost felt like uh, the whole world was put on an even playing field because, you know, there's some people that say they're going through a crisis and nobody else could relate to them. And okay. now this has kind of brought everybody in the whole world to this even playing field where now we all have to tap back and, and regroup. And now, like exactly the fact that we're quarantined in our homes, now that now we have to realize this is where you realize, like, what have I been working for? What have I been doing all this time? You know, um, I know, for example, I was on the road so much and I would constantly say with a little bit of bitterness, like, why did I invest all this money in a home when I'm never home? Why am I living in a hotel room? But all of a sudden after that all stopped, I realized like I get to really appreciate the things that I enjoy about how, why, I, why I invested in a house. You know, like I, I, could, I have a garden I need to tend to. I've, I've got a pet that I want that want, I like to actually engage and build a bond with. Um, I have a spouse that you know now we've rekindled a lot of our relationship because it just got to the point you were just co roommates mm -hmm. and um so those things it gave you the opportunity to improve yourself to improve your environment and but there's also some of those that people that also are the other had the other side that they used their careers as escapisms because things were not positive in the households and that was another fear that i was really worried about were for those people um because sometimes there was abuse at the house again something that we're hiding and, st and stifling from, from our workplaces yeah now can you talk about what are some things that most people would not expect that can cause us to you know our resiliency to be reduced in adulthood. So, so, so I'm talking about things that happen after the age of 18, because most people talk about what happens before. What about after 18? Mm -hmm. All right, so when it comes to that point, um, our biggest thing that we, as adults, now we have, we're, in, we're normally now in control of our controls. And we use, a lot of adults use escapisms they use their social status, they use the um, internet for, for their way to escape. Now, does this build up our resiliency? Partially, but is it based on a fact or is it an escapism? Now, how we can tap into our resiliency as an adult is being honest. We have to start to be honest with ourselves and take a, a gut, again, like doing our homework. We need to sit there and, and actually take the time to state, you know, what is it of my past that I can, that is, is positive, that I can take into my present. And especially when we're working in careers where we can all of a sudden say, hey, you know, I was um, put in this position of, let's say, a leadership role or a promotion, or you um, got, you know, got a transfer to some place that uh, you were really looking forward to. Um, your in engagement with your community and the, the things that you do as um, of like a volunteer. These are things where, where people look look up to you. So all of a sudden, when you're feeling down and you feel like you don't have anything there, you know that in the you can tap into that as a resiliency. Um, I would say like a um, a tag that you can just say there. Okay, this this is in my pocket. This is this is in my arsenal that yeah, people do respect me or people do need me or people do look up to me. And then they, that, that empowers you as well. We get more from um, actually being selfless and giving to others to help us build be as a better human being and build our strengths up. Because that they say the strength in numbers, like 
you know, like it's like a team. It's like this kind of sub subconscious team that you don't realize that you're that you're creating. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it too is also the, what you, the, like the stuff that we read, like the literature that we read. Um, a lot of it's like those self help books too have quite a bit of imp impact. Um, and as well as let's say um, um, hyp hypnotherapy style audios. Mm. To help us like rewire our conscious thinking. Uh -huh. Now, can you talk a little more about those? Are those like affirmation type videos? Or are they specifically like hypnotherapy type ones where it, like? Well, everybody's a little different. So some people respond well to doing affirmations, you know, and but if you're just seeing the same mantra over and over again, most people are not engaged in it in a, in a more of a in depth from the heart mentality. You know, I could say, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. But if you don't know how to connect to that feeling, you're not going to achieve that feeling. You could say that for till the cows come home. And most of us don't own cows, so that could be a long time, you know. <laughs> so, so then um, it's that's important to really be able to tap into our emotions and be authentic to our emotions. So if you were, like, say, looking for a, a partner and you have been single for a while, you need to actually be able to re say, well, where was it that I really felt love and if sometimes if it's not in people sometimes it is in a pet mm. and sometimes it is in doing something like working as a volunteer if you're working with kids for example and you say oh, you know, oh gosh i really love that little kid she's just so you know she just, just moves me and um and now those are the things that we need to start really tapping into can you explain that a little bit further feeling so like like, like um with like how you give ex example the millionaire Millionaire, millionaire, millionaire. What do you mean by <laughs> feeling? Is that like you're envisioning it? Can you just describe that for people who don't know? So I'll give you a little example if we, we've got the time. Um, I ended up getting into a, a really serious accident that completely crushed my dreams of a professional career as a, an equestrian athlete. And I knew that meant that I would never get to the Olympics. I would never make it to the Worlds. And I was too busted up. It would take a couple of years of surgeries before I was be able to, you know, even get back towards a, a horse. And I went from a six-figure income down to zero. And I was in that hard spot for a long time. But however, it was, it was that listening to, I was listening initially to um, that law of attraction and I heard the story about a gentleman that had a plane crash and he couldn't even breathe. So that I'm sitting there going, and he said, all I wanted to do was just breathe without a machine. I'm like, and I'm sitting here crying about a you know, ripped up, ripped out leg. And um, so I said, no, you know what? It's okay. Whatever the lesson is, that's all right. I'm, I'm just going to move forward. And the feeling of, okay, I have made a conscious effort that I just got to get moving forward to a, to a job that I know has got an income because right now I had nothing, right? I had nothing. And once I had that in place, I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it. And Jack Canfield said it, said it best because he said when he was doing chicken soup for the soul, he pasted a hundred thousand dollar bill or like wrote up, like I wrote, I created a hundred thousand dollar bill and stuck it. And I said, and feeling like, what does it feel like to have a hundred thousand? Thank gosh. I, I actually had that once. So I knew, and it only took me three years, and the, the accountants that were doing my taxes said, how, do, like, wow, like, you just, you went from, like, 7,000 to 70,000, and all of a sudden, you're 170,000, and you did this in under, like, in four years. Wow. I said, and it was, and it was because I was just, I know in my heart what I wanted, the lifestyle that it was attached to, how, how, what kind of work ethic I required to get to that. And, and I just believe that the next, that every day it was like the next opportunity, whatever opportunity that is supposed to be out there for me is going to come. And I just, I'm going to go with it. I have to trust the process. Mm -hmm. And that is our biggest thing we need to do is trust the process. Because as soon as we give up and give up hope, we give up our faith, then we lost trust in the process. Mm. Can I ask you this question? So, you know, going along with trusting the process, you, so the time it takes in between, you know, when we set the intention and when we actually start feeling it to when we actually achieve to achieve it, there's a little bit of a time frame gap in there. Can you describe, you know, mm -hmm. you know, basically how to, how to stay positive and to really get through that waiting time? Well, everybody's a little bit different. I just know for me that it, it was self-help psychology, um, reading the books and being able to apply it. And the, 
the fact that I was already trying to, I've already been working on and helping people with resiliency, especially with incarcerated women in institutions, and getting to change their mindset of, you know, wanting to, wanting to be eligible for parole. Mm -hmm. And what did that feel like to be, feel like, you know, I'm not incarcerated. I, what does it feel to be back out there, be having a normal life and, and the liberties and the freedoms once they, because they knew what that felt like and they knew what they wanted. So, what were they going what's what were they going to do what was the one step they could start doing today one day at a time is all we got we got we have no guarantee the future what's one step today that we can make a difference to making to moving forward mm -hmm. to liberating ourselves period not just incarcerated people but i mean people as, as a whole like because we, we do we self we, we incarcerate our own entities in some of our traumas mm -hmm. yeah. and that's and that's the and that's the one that we need to really look at and, yeah. You know, just kind of switching gears and winding down, what does success mean to you? That is a great question. You know, it, we have to look at our values. What is important to us? You know, some people, the number one thing that they value and cherish more above anything is their spouse. And, or another person could be their children or their, their religious faith or like they have their priorities and we need to identify at least the top five values that we really want. It's most like, like especially and when it comes to uh, very cataclysmic uh, events where, you know, people are stripped of everything, they realize like, okay, really what is important? After having a house fire and losing absolutely everything, I realized that I had to look at who am I? It's not the material things. It wasn't my, wasn't my sports trophies. It wasn't my military medals. It wasn't the accolades of achievement or my, my diplomas. That's not who I am. That's just what I've done. Mm -hmm. But I had to really sit back and really tap into who am I? And the who am I is the values that you hold that you want the world to know, what the integrity that you stand by. And those were the main things that, that allowed me to quickly, again, um, rebuild after losing absolutely everything and getting back into something that I felt this is, I, it, it was. I sat there in my, ho my new home um, a year and a half later with a profound sense of gratitude going, I manifested this because the desire of what was priority to me mm -hmm. was I stuck, I honed on to that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that and that's the feeling you've got to tap into. That's that's the core of your your very core of who you are. Mm -hmm. Now, so just kind of do you have um, where can people go to either learn more about you? Where can they go to connect with you further? I can be found pretty much on every social media platform. Um, they can reach out to, to me directly. I have a, a website and if they want to, you know, at least just get a feel of what's going on, they can go right to, it's called Pegasus Life Solutions. And there's quite the story behind that um, website name. And, um, but nonetheless, that's, that's where they can reach me at. They can reach me on a social media, any social media that's under s.angelshaw, be it uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Yeah, so I encourage that, like I said, I've, I've got a kind of like an open door policy. Mm -hmm. okay. Excellent. You know, that's, that's very helpful. I mean, being available for people who need help. So I really appreciate you. you know, and thanks so much for taking the time to yeah. come on the show. And just what I really enjoy sometimes is that I'll post. I think we got a lag going on. <laughs> There's a lag, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I was gonna say, we do have a lag going on. Interesting. Um, yeah, sorry, so I don't mean to cut you off. Sorry about that. It's, yeah, it says it says your bandwidth is low. Uh, no, it's okay, it just said your bandwidth is low. So I don't know, <laughs> maybe everybody's, everybody's entertaining and streaming themselves some Netflix today. <laughs> Excellent, you know. So to those watching at home, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. 
I thoroughly hope that you got some great value. I know that I got some great value out of this um, you know, conversation. I learned mostly today is it's all about the feelings, tapping into the feeling of what you want to be able to get, and then really learning how to make small steps every single day so you can reach your goals. So hopefully you enjoyed this conversation. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Um, if you are looking for a place where people are uplifting themselves and inspiring themselves to do better every single day and helping others do the same, I recommend you go and check out our free community. I'm just gonna be a link either above or below this video. It's basically a mastermind where people come together and you know inspire and support each other to you know move forward in their lives. So if that's what you've been searching for, go ahead and click on the link either above or below the video right now and join us inside of our community. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed creating it. Feel free to hit that share button so other people can get some benefit as well. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. See you later. We're done recording in three and two and